Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to our special guest speaker series. Today, we are with Dan Woods. Hi, Dan. How's it going? Hey, very good. Thank you. Cool. So uh, today, we're going to do some short video presentation and then have a little bit of a discussion. So we're going to be talking about uh, struggles of with self-filming, relationship marketing, Instagram, and YouTube. Yep. If we can cover all that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> cool. So, um, Dan, how about you um, go ahead and start one of the videos and we can talk afterwards? Sure. Okay. Very good. I'm going to share my computer screen. I uh, got it. All right. There we go. I'm going to hit play on this first video and then we'll talk about it. Sounds good. Hey, what's up? It's Danny here. I want to try something totally new. I just heard fireworks go off in the background. It's the new year, and I have a pretty cool setting. It's a prison, an old prison, and it goes with the theme of today's video, which is going to be about feeling trapped. My example of failing started with this vlog, but your example can be totally different, whether it's losing weight or trying something new or anything in general. We've all failed. So if you've ever been on that fail train, you'll totally appreciate where I'm coming from. When I failed with my vlog, there were three primary things that did that to me. The first one was the gear and the process. So I overcomplicated all the gear that I needed and the process to actually edit the video and stitch it all together is just like really paralyzed me. Nothing ever felt natural and candid. It was very scripted, uh, robotic, and just shit is basically what I ended up thinking. Speaking of the script, I could never memorize the script. So I tried so many different things where I would put bullet points and tape it onto the tripod underneath the camera, but you could see me looking down and not looking into the camera. And uh, then other things I tried was actually writing up a script and using a teleprompter. That one actually worked really good. But the problem with it was my videos turned out to be just me talking into the camera and nobody wants to see that. And so me doing a talking head video just wasn't going to cut it for today's modern world. Uh, we just don't have the attention span for that. So the teleprompter idea is awesome, except for boring. Now, whatever your project is that you're working on that you keep failing at, a lot of times we let stuff get in the way. So my example here is I'm looking at a GoPro. I actually love the GoPro. I think everybody should have one. However, we all experience it where you buy something brand new thinking it's going to solve your problem and you take it out of the box and you shoot your first little shot or you do whatever you do with it. And it's just like not what you expected. Everybody else made it look so much better than how you are doing it. And it's kind of embarrassing. When I see all the other footage that people are capturing with it, the clarity of the audio, the crispness of the scene, just like the whole cinematic sequence. And then I get it and it's just like, well, well, terrible. So the process or the end result is never what you expected. I mean, especially when you compare yourself to different people. So I just threw up three people on the screen here. There's Stacy, Peter, and Jesse. And these are three guys that I really, really, really look up to. And the problem with me looking up to these guys is that I pale in comparison. I never cut it. Uh, when I look at the quality of the work that they do, these are three YouTubers. But it doesn't matter if it's three YouTubers that you are inspired by or if it's like a star that you look up to, an uh, industry leader or a colleague down the hallway. What ends up happening is we get so distracted and blinded by the polish and the fake social world that we live in that we expect what we do to be the exact same results as what they do. And if it's not even close, we're just kind of depressed and sad with ourselves. And uh, I definitely found myself in that boat because I just never found my groove. So I got this video up here and it's showing behind the scenes. So a lot of the people that are ahead of you, there's usually a team behind them. And that team has a collective experience, whether it be like 20 years in that industry or 10 years or 15 or 30. And you're trying it for the first time. You have a collective experience of zero. We always forget this. And when I'm trying to do self-filming like I am now, and then I want to go home and I want to edit this little video, I, I have to realize I don't have the army, which is flying by right now. There's literally a, an air base and that's an army helicopter. So the army is flying away without me and I'm standing here by myself doing it. So it's easy for them to look all high on their horse when they got a crew of people that can make them look good in any light. And then here we are over in the corner, if anybody can relate, you're like a horse, just <laughs> a toy horse walking in circles and people are just walking by. They're not even like offering to help us, right? 
so my problem initially started with the fact that on YouTube, I'm over 500 videos right now, which is awesome. That's not the problem. I got about 300 that are public and 200 that are private. Now there's an algorithm that YouTube really looks at and it's called audience retention. That's the playthrough rate. So if it was a 60 second video, what's the percentage of time people will stick through? Is it a 10 seconds, 40, 60? Obviously the higher, the better. Now, my problem with this audience retention is that I have really long format videos. They're like 40 minutes to 60 minutes. And ideally on YouTube, it should be more like three minutes to 12 minutes. And so that's a huge problem for me. And because of that, YouTube is going to be penalizing my videos organically when people do searching. So I thought to fix this problem would be to just make shorter format videos, three minute to eight minute videos. So what I could do is take all of my old format videos, repurpose them into fresh content. So I thought I'd flip the switch and create my own lane. I mean, I kept trying to compare myself to other vloggers and compare myself to other people that are doing things that just aren't my strengths and skill sets. So I thought, why can't I just create my own lane? One thing I've discovered in my public speaking endeavors, when I'm on stage and I'm doing a presentation, the presentation that everybody is looking at actually isn't for them. The presentation is for me. It's a visual reference and a visual cue as to what I should be saying and keeping me on track for my story. So why can't I do the same thing where I just use my phone to tell a little story for you? So I'm using Keynote right now. Keynote is an awesome tool. It allows you to create presentations directly on your phone. So everything that you've seen in this video so far, I made on Keynote. All the animations of the text, all the actual videos that you're watching, it's just playing on Keynote and I'm recording my screen as I talk to you. What's really awesome about this little video, it gives me an organic script. I'm not reading something word for word and feeling like a robot and unnatural. It allows me to just tell my story and kind of bounce around, but stay in the lane. It also gives me the B-roll overlay footage for you so that uh, it breaks up the monotony of being so boring, just staring at my face the whole time that I talk. And then also the cool thing about Keynote is that you can do it in portrait mode. So I can create this presentation the size of my phone, and then therefore I can upload it to things like Instagram stories and Facebook stories and even Facebook and YouTube now allow you to upload in portrait mode. And when a person watches that, it takes up the whole screen, basically storytelling on the go. This is going to be my new format. And I want to know, like, if you stumble, will you make it part of the dance? Because I've literally been stumbled, stumbling for years. I just stumbled on that word. And I've been stumbling for years. Like literally I bought my Sony DSLR camera like three or four years ago to make a, a vlog. And then I was going to do another vlog of me doing adventures and having fun. And it just took the fun out of the fun by having to create all this content is just not why I wanted to do it. Now I have a real reason. My YouTube channel, the numbers are going to start to go down because of that audience retention rate and people just don't care for long format videos. So part of my stumbling enabled me to fail forward and find a solution that I, I think will work. I don't know anybody else who's doing these type of, of videos where um, they're using a presentation on their phone to keep them on track, but I think you could do it as well. Let me share a couple ideas with you. Monthly videos. So if you were a real estate agent, you could create a presentation on your phone for the market stats of what's happened in your market, property types, that sort of thing. And then it could be a monthly video that you do. It only takes like a minute or two minutes to make. A product or service highlight video. So I could easily create, if I was in the car industry and a new car comes out, just like even in real estate as well, kind of like going through a presentation, talking about all the highlights and you're like flipping the page of the magazine or flipping the page of the brochure or flipping through um, the listing photos of that property and you're just kind of talking about them. About you, all real estate agents and all people in business should have an about you, about the team and or about the company. And so maybe you could start off with making that as your video. And then uh, the client process. So a lot of the videos that I make, I intend on repurposing for multiple reasons. I never make a video just for uploading a video sake. I always have a reason for it. Many times it's either for a landing page or for like a follow-up sequence to educate a person as to why they should maybe enroll in that product or service. Hopefully I just gave you a couple ideas. I don't know, I'm just kind of, oh, time's up, they're shooting the cannons. So we're standing out front of the prison here. <laughs> Hopefully you don't feel trapped. Hopefully you fail forward and um, on to the next. Right. 
I'm going to stop that video there. I want to come back and we'll cancel the screen sharing. There we go. Okay, I'm on camera, right? You can see me? Yep. Good. Cool. And you could hear that audio, I'm assuming, right? So you heard yes. that whole story? Cool. Yeah. So yeah, the video is so important in today's world for real estate agents. It's unbelievable. A lot of agents have this fear of like being on camera. And I totally understand. Like I get it. I really do. I get it. I understand it's so hard to like self film everything you do. Like you buy the GoPro, you take it out of the box and all the videos you watched online make it look so amazing. And then you get your footage and it is just so rubbish. It's like dark and shaky and there's no story. It's just like a bunch of clips you kind of put together. Um, and it becomes like a real challenge. So that video you just watched a 100% was shot and edited and all the animations, all of it was done on my phone. So I, I really like the idea of using a presentation. Um, in that scenario, what I did was I had a tripod with my camera. Like if you look at your phone, if, if the agents who are listening to this recording, look at their phone, you're going to have two cameras, the one that faces you and then the one on the back. Well, it's the one on the back that is amazing. So when I was filming myself, I wasn't like looking at myself in the phone. I was using the back of the phone because it's a better camera. So that was on a tripod and I just set it to 4K quality. So I had the highest resolution and I hit record. Then in that video, I had an older like it was an older iPhone, but maybe it could have been a tablet or an iPod or something. And I was just going through. You could either do PowerPoint if you're Android or if you're iPhone, you I would use Keynote. And I was just using that and you can record your screen. So I was recording my screen as I was going through the presentation. And then all I did is I put the two videos together. It was the easiest way of making, I could have never made, well, I don't know if that was like an eight minute video or how long it was, but I could never have talked for that length of time and done it in one take without a script, but I couldn't memorize a script because I'm not from Hollywood. So I was just using this little keynote presentation and agents, you guys can use this for anything, whether it like you have a house value page right? Like find out what your home's values are. You have a uh, getting into real estate, like join our team type of page. Maybe you've got all these things that you do on a monthly basis. Do you do like a, a monthly newsletter with market statistics? Like all of those could be presentations that you make on your phone and you just record your phone and then record yourself going through it. And people are totally cool with you, like holding a phone in your hand and you're swiping through. I, I don't know. It didn't look unprofessional to me other than that. There's a typo. There's a spelling error and there's a couple transition glitches where like if I had better skill, I would have been able to do it cleaner. Um, but that was the first time I ever did that video. Like I, I shot, edited and made that all on my phone just as an experiment to see if I could. And my videos have only improved since I made that first, that first video. A lot of, Oh, do you, were you about to say something? No, I was going to say, um, I, I find when um, I'm even trying to do like a, a minute Facebook live video is the memorization. Like I, I tried a teleprompter app on my phone and it, it makes me sound so robotic. The challenge with the teleprompter app is that it forces you to use the front facing camera yeah. and it's the back one that's better. So we're spending all of this money and buying our phone because of the better quality camera, but the agents aren't using it. They're always just using the one that shows them on the screen. And I understand it's because you want to see like that you're in the shot and that sort of thing. Um, the other trick that I had in that scenario was um, I, I have a smartwatch and uh, so Apple, but basically any smartwatch and um, that Apple watch connects to my camera and is a preview. So I can see a preview of what's in the frame and I can click where I want the focus and I can hit record and I can stop record. Um, so that really helps a lot as well. Uh, I mean, I used to always have a problem of like walking around the camera, hitting record, walking back, doing my little thing. And there's like a lot of back and forth. But once I found out that the Apple watch has the camera app on it and you can just click the focus, hit record. Yeah. It made things pretty, pretty simple. Um, I, I, I like keynote it's free on your Apple device, but if you're not Apple, then use, um, PowerPoint and you could easily like all of your listings. So whenever you guys get a listing, just upload all of the photos in the presentation and you're just swiping through 
and you're talking about it. And on one half of the screen is you, and on the other half of the screen is your presentation. I strategically did it where I was on the top and then my presentation was down below because I discovered that uh, most of the people that watch my videos are watching them on a smart device. And um, how do people hold the phone in their hand when they're surfing and using it? They, they hold it like this. So back in the day, it used to be kind of like a inside joke that if you uploaded a video and you had those black bars and meant you didn't know how to use video, but that's not the case anymore. If I upload, so normally we would want you to upload the video in landscape mode. Well, that video you just watched was in portrait mode. And um, if I upload a video in portrait mode on uh, Facebook or YouTube and Instagram, um, all of those platforms know to play the video in full screen while the person is holding the phone like this. So I, I forget the actual number, but it was, let's say 80%. 80% um, of my views are done holding a phone. So I just made all my videos, my vlog style videos are now portrait mode. And um, I do a square of me at the top. And then the presentation that I have on my phone that I'm going through, I didn't do the traditional PowerPoint size, which is like uh, this, I did a square. So I just made all of my graphics and animations fit into a square. That way, when I put the video clip in, it fit. I didn't have to do any editing. Like I didn't have to clip any bars or anything. It worked out really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shall we go on to the next one? OK, so this next one I'm going to do, uh, we'll do it based on YouTube, because it just goes back to back with what we were just talking about. So I'm going to hit play. Hey, what's up? This is Danny Wood. This is vlog number four. And on this one, we're covering YouTube, specifically how real estate agents can use YouTube to get buyers and sellers. Now, we did a full webinar with special guest Karen Carr. She actually wrote a book on how real estate agents are using YouTube. Now, I highly suggest you check that out. And a lot of people don't know this, but you don't actually need an e-reader like a Kindle or whatever these things are called. You can just use your phone. So just buy the book on Amazon using your phone, and you can use Amazon's app directly on your phone to read the book or get the paper version, which is probably better. So check it out, YouTube for real estate agents. We're going to dive deep on the webinar. So we did a webinar. It was a whole one-hour webinar, and we got all these great ideas, and I'm going to summarize it for you. So idea number one that you should be aware of is that YouTube is a search engine, but so is Google. And so when you go to Google and search things, like here I search moving to Savannah, guess whose video pops up in Google on the homepage for free up at the top? Karen's video. And your video should when we do the same search in your city. So these are the top videos that Karen's using in her area. So living in Savannah, you should do one living in your city. Moving to Savannah, is it cheaper to buy or build a house? Now this one's generic and I would probably stay away from doing generic videos and be more niche to your community in the city and town that you serve because you're just going to be more relevant and local. Um, how long does it take to close on a house? So that's another generic one. Cities near Savannah. So of her top five videos, three of them are specific to her local area. So there, I just shortened your learning curve. Those are the first three videos that you should consider making because they're working for her. And I doubt anybody's doing videos in your area so they can be working for you as well. So here's an example of me going to Google and doing a search. This is another little hack that you should be aware of. When you type anything into the Google search bar, it will pop up with a bunch of suggestions. Those are based on the top search terms that people are actually doing. So Google's trying to make it easier for people to click and just get to what they want. Well, as an advertiser, this is market research. This is showing me when I type in Toronto real estate, these are the top things that people are searching. So maybe these are the types of videos that I should be covering and talking about. Now, another tool that we discovered is Answer the Public. So if you go to answerthepublic.com and type in here, I'll type in buying a home. So as a keyword or a topic, I, I want to know what are people asking about buying a home? Answer the Public is going to do all this stuff in the background and then pop off a list. So here it gave me 38 questions that people are asking online about buying a home. I'll zoom in. It's going to be kind of blurry because I have to like stretch it out a little. The first one here says... Uh, how is buying a home a good investment? That's a great video that you could make. And I would be specific. How is buying a Toronto home a great investment? 
So get a little more niche with it. How does buying a foreclosed home work? How does buying a home help with taxes? How does buying a home affect your credit? So all of these questions, there's 38 of them, that's a benchmark and a, and a game plan for you to work towards making video content. You can just go to answer the public and it's gonna give you the content that you should be making or at least consider making. Now, another tool Karen discussed, I haven't used this one yet, but I certainly am going to now. It's called Keywords Everywhere. And what's really cool about this program, I'll zoom down, it's not monthly or subscription. You just buy credits. So for $10, you can buy 100,000 credits. And one credit equals one keyword. So you can do research on all the different keywords in your area, and it's going to tell you what's working, what's not, and suggested keywords. Like, really cool tool. And the fact that it's just $10, and most of you will never need more than that, it's a good little resource. I'm glad she told us about that one. She also told us about the five second rule, and that's your opening of the video. You got to get right to the point. You can't have those canned animated logo sequences buy off of Fiverr, for example. Um, it's just not that good of an idea because people don't care about you and your brand and your logo. They care what's the video about and how's it going to help me. So you need to get into the five W's, the who, what, where, when, why, and get right to the point. Some people can get away with having like slow motion animated sequences of you like opening the door and looking all cool and the wind's blowing in your hair and stuff. If you can rock it, great, but I'd say most people don't care about you that much and they care more about the content that they're about to watch. So just get right to the point if you can. Now, speaking of Fiverr, one of the things that you can do on Fiverr that's a great idea is outsourcing your video editing. So you can go to Fiverr and find a whole bunch of video editors that can work for like $5, 10, 30, 60, whatever you want to pay, depending on the quality. And Fiverr is a really good resource for that. Now, I personally don't use Fiverr as much as I use Upwork. I love Upwork. I'll tell you a story. Upwork is where I find virtual assistants. One of the franchises paid me to go do a talk and hang out in Mexico, which was awesome. And I took a GoPro and I got to hang out with all the agents and we went off site and did a bunch of excursions like uh, kayaking and zip lines and coco bongos and uh, a couple other things. And I brought a GoPro, captured all this amazing footage. But then when I got home, I didn't have time or the knowledge or want to actually do anything with that footage. So I went to Upwork and I created a contest. I hired five virtual assistants who all do video editing. I gave them all the same folder and said, here, you just make the best video that you can. Tell me a story with the footage here. And one of the guys blew me out of the water, man. It was like he made a music video based on my fun excursion. So now going forward, I know what virtual assistant is going to get all of my video editing, right? So over the long haul, it's going to save you a lot of time and hassle. It might cost you more money up front, but it's the best way to hire and find people is just hire like three or four of them and then pick the winner. And going forward, you know, this is the person I'm going to use for this specific task. Like I have one girl who only does animated voiceovers. She has a way sexier voice than I do. So I get her to do a lot of my voice work. And I have another person that only does banner ads for Google. Like I find all these virtual assistants that have one niche that they focus on and I just pay them per project. It's a cool way of doing it. Now, one of the things that people love hearing us talk about are the apps that we use. So we're gonna slide right into that. The first one is PromSmart Pro. And this is a teleprompter that works on your phone and it puts the text right underneath the camera. So it looks like I'm reading, or sorry, it looks like I'm looking right into the camera, but I'm actually reading text. And this text is scrolling as I talk. So if I stop talking, the text stops scrolling. Really, really cool app. It's gonna help a lot of you out. I know it helped me out. Now I don't use that anymore. What I like to do is this, where I do Keynote. So I have my video split into two, where half of it is me, and then the bottom half is my Keynote. The Keynote, is just to keep me on track. This is my script. This is my teleprompter. And the other benefit to it is that I'm recording my screen at the same time. And now I have overlay footage that references what I'm talking about. So it's a win-win. Now, Keynote is a free app, but it's only free on iPhone and iPad. And some of you are like, ugh, I hate iPhone. I only use Android. All right, so then you're gonna wanna check out PowerPoint. PowerPoint has an app that works on your phone and on your tablet, and you can make your presentations and use that as your script. So there you go. One of the tools that Karen uses for editing video is WeVideo. Now she does all her video editing from a desktop computer. I don't know if she's used the app. I searched the app just for you to see that there was one. 
I don't know if it's any good or not, but everybody raves about the desktop version of it. They have a iPad version and a Android version, so check it out. It might work for you. I don't use it. The one I use is LumaFusion. Hands down, nothing beats editing video on your iPad or on your iPhone uh, when you use LumaFusion, but it's only iOS and not Android, so that sucks for some of you. Now, when it comes to good video, one of the other things you need is great audio. And so free music. Music Archive is a free place. You don't need to give credit card. You can download royalty-free music that can be playing in the background while you're talking. And it kind of covers up the fact that you're using a crappy microphone or there's like a ambient background noise. You can use free music from Free Music Archive. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's really nice music, especially for the price. It's free. Now, I don't use it anymore because I use Epidemic. I create so much video that having a monthly subscription for really premium audio is worth it to me and it might be worth it to you. So check out Epidemic. This is where I get all of my music and sound effects. So Epidemic is a really, really cool service, but it's monthly and a lot of agents might not need that. Now, one of the hottest things that we talk about is the gear to use, but I have to pause and continue this video later on. Okay. So in a future video, if you want access to the live webinar that we did, we talk about the gear, we talk about the lights, the mics, and the stands and all the other accessories that we use. So if that's something that like you want to tune into, head on over to Patreon. Okay, I'm going to stop that video because that's a sales pitch at the end of that one. Let me come back to you. All right. So one of the things that people are missing out on when they're uploading their videos to YouTube is that like so many real estate agents post a video on YouTube and they really feel heartbroken because they put a lot of time and energy into making this video and then they get eight views, 20 views, 30 views. It's like really common. So here's the deal. It's great that you can upload videos to YouTube and it's free. Now, I'm not uploading my videos to YouTube to YouTube for the video, I'm uploading my videos to YouTube because I'm gonna spin that into content as a blog on my website. That's the real power, that's the link most people are missing out on. So if I was to make a YouTube video like that, one of me just standing there in a desert, which I literally walked out into the middle of a desert and I made that little video on video, a video on video. And so I took that video and then I repurposed it into content as blog content for our website. I repurposed it into a follow-up touch for uh, a certain type of lead that we had. I repurposed it into, I could have taken that audio and used it as a podcast. Like there's so many ways that you can repurpose and leverage a YouTube video. It's not just a matter of getting your video and posting it on, on YouTube. You should be taking that video and then repurposing it. So I love the idea of going to that website, uh, answerthepublic.com, and then you type in whatever the main keyword is of the product or service that you intend on fulfilling. And then it's gonna give you a list of a whole bunch of questions people are asking based on that topic. Well, now what I would do is I would make a video answering each of those questions or talking about those topics and discussions. Once you have that video, you then, I don't know if I even mentioned it in this recording you just watched, but um, there's a tool I like to use called Rev, rev.com, where you can take a video, upload it, and it will transcribe the video into a written transcription. So there's a lot of programs that will do that for you like automatically, but they're garbage. So with rev.com, it's a dollar a minute. And most of your videos are gonna be like what? Most people's videos are a minute to three minutes in length is a pretty common number. Um, mine are more like eight minutes to 15 minutes. So it's like $15 per video for me. And that's US dollars. So it's like $30, uh, just kidding. And so you can take that audio transcription. And what's cool about it is that a a real person vets it. So they actually, they automatically generate the transcription, but then they go through it with a fine tooth comb. It's not perfect, but it's like 99% perfect. And so I'll take that written content and now I can repurpose it for our blog. And that's the whole power. The video is to help me make better blogs and the blogs is what gets me the traffic. It's not, I mean, it is true that Google and YouTube are the same company. And if you do a Google search in her example, it was like um, moving to Savannah or relocating to Savannah or whatever it was. And what comes up at the top of the search results, 
her YouTube videos. Well, the same is true for my YouTube videos as well. And that's, that's great. But what about getting your website ranked? That all comes down to better content and more of it and fuller, richer content, like a, a, like a longer, deep, fresh, original written post is golden. And so using video is an awesome way for you to do that for sure. Did anything strike a chord with you that you wanted me to touch on? Um, no, you're like, I'm getting a whole lot of great ideas. Like the whole uh, using keynote, um, at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. no, I think that, that's an awesome idea. Sweet. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again and we'll go to another one. Oh, anybody who's watching this video, um, where is it? My cell number is written on this screen. It's 905-903-5442. It doesn't matter if you're watching this at 10 at night or seven in the morning. Send me a text message if you want to have a free half hour coaching call and I'll answer and address any questions you have. Okay. So I'm going to share my computer audio, select this screen. All right. So this next one I want to talk about is Instagram. We go. Hey, what's up? My name is Danny Wood. This is vlog number three. And today we're going to be covering Instagram tips and tricks. Now, I was really fortunate to have Kelsey on my show. We did a full one hour webinar on Instagram marketing for real estate agents. This will apply to any industry, regardless of what you're in, but we focused on real estate just because. And one of the main things we want to have you do is work smarter, not harder, because a lot of people are spinning their wheels with Instagram. They're, they don't feel like they're getting anything from it. So this is what we're going to cover today. Now, if you want to go deeper, she does have a book. It's called What to Post. It's just released. Whattopost.com is where you can get the book. And it's all about Instagram st strategies for the real estate industry. So I definitely encourage you head on over to that. But I want to uncover what we did for the webinar. So we did a one-hour webinar. I want to shrink it down as much as possible to just the highlights. The first thing she starts with is the username and field name. And this name field, if you look at it, if you go to your account, you probably have a picture of you and then your name makes a lot of sense. But she says Instagram has two fields that are searchable, the name one up at the top, and then the one underneath your profile picture. So the one under your profile picture, you should actually probably use for keywords if you want free organic growth. So her example is better than my example. Her says Instagram for real estate. So think of what are the things that you do? Toronto real estate? Maybe you want to put that in there because it's searchable. The rest of the bio is not searchable. So you really want to leverage this for all that you can. The main thing she's going to ask a person when she's doing an audit with them would be, are you on a business account or a personal account? And a lot of people fear this because they don't want to be on a business account because we all know what happened with Facebook with the business page. It's just like everything tanked, right? And you, you like the way it is. Well, she says there's no negative impact on having a business account over the personal account. There's just a bunch of extra positives and bonuses that you get. So why would you want to miss on that? So there's no algorithmic difference whatsoever. So you should be on a business page. The only difference I found was if I posted something on my personal Instagram and I shared it, it would go to my personal Facebook. And I like that. That was a good feature. But once I use the Instagram for business, then it wouldn't link the two. It wouldn't go to my personal Facebook. And that's the only drawback that I found, but everything else is way worth it. So First of all, you get a contact button. So you can add a contact button on your Instagram account now. And it's not new, but it might be new for you. Wouldn't you like to have people calling you? You can add a call, a text, or an email button right on at the top of the page. So I use this and I'm getting calls, right? And I'm not saying that you're going to use it and you're going to start getting calls. But if you're not using it, you're definitely not getting calls, right? So take a look at that. You can add a contact button because you're using the business page. During the live webinar, I was shocked to discover this, that it shows analytics of all of your content. And you can really slice it many different ways to look at it. But the, the main thing that I got was of my top three posts, all three of them were IGTV videos. Well, you know what that means to me? I need to make more IGTV videos. So it will show you what's working and what's not. And I'm not saying your answer is that you need to make Instagram TV videos. That's what my audience tunes into. But maybe your audience will tune into pictures of cats versus dogs, as an example. So you'll see the common threads and then you'll be able to maneuver strategically, working smarter and not harder. In the bio, 
you ha you should have a unique value proposition. So she's going to say, for example, her says, I share real estate marketing tips that help you grow your biz and make more money doing what you love. DM me for a free Instagram audit, helpful downloads, click here. So I love the two step process where she has two call to actions. One is for a direct message for like a free audit. And then the other one is to take action to go somewhere else. So I literally just copied her basically word for word because if it works, rock it. So I said, I help brokerages with recruiting and real estate agents with marketing. Message me for a free audit consultation if you want to grow. And then I give them the link to take more action. So I, I really like that two step process where you add two unique value propositions into your bio. I mean, if you're not, then you're not getting anything, right? So take a look, use what we're doing, modify it to be your own. One of the things I discovered is that the Instagram stories, I thought they were all just deleted. They'll have a 24 hour shelf life and then they're gone. They're archived. So you can go back to all of your past stories, pull them together and group them into different groups, like a highlight. Um, at the top of this page here, I have a banner and it has the different icons. So I put speaking, recruiting, marketing, and vlog, but maybe you wanna highlight friends, family, food, and fun or whatever, right? Think of it as like a mindshare mission of all the things that you're up to in life and somebody goes to your Instagram account, what's the thing that you want them to know about you? So that's what these groups are all about. And the fact that they're archived, you can go back in time and create a clean slate of a whole bunch of little groups of archived stories. It's pretty cool, you should be doing it. I don't know why you're not if you aren't. And uh, you can head on over to Etsy and search Instagram story highlight icon and there's hundreds or thousands of them already made. You can just buy them $5 or $10, download a pack of them, and then you've got a concise, clean branding across the top of all of your highlights, like little buttons. And uh, you can see mine here. Um, th there's a real estate example I put on the screen. There's tons of real estate examples that are already done for you. You don't even have to design them. Now for our Instagram stories, we're using this approach, it's a strategy. We're looking at the screen size and then we're dividing it into three sections. The very top section is a banner for your branding or a call to action or whatever. And then we use negative space. That way we could add things like buttons and text and stickers. And then underneath that is gonna be the photo of the actual post. So when we post something, we actually break it up into three sections and we make sure to include lots of room for negative space. That way we could add things like hashtags and usernames or we could add things like interactive buttons. Otherwise, you're putting your content on top of other content. So pre-build your story with the thought of having a negative space in mind. Now, of all the tips and tricks that you're gonna learn from anybody on any social media platform, the answer is always gonna come down to engagement. So if, for example, you have 500 friends on Instagram and all 500 of them post something today, are you gonna see all 500 posts? No, you're not. And so how does Instagram determine whose posts they're gonna show you? Here's an example of how I did that strategy. I posted this on Facebook and I said, hey, we're doing a webinar, we're gonna record it, you can join live, who's interested? It's basically what I said. And 180 people commented saying, I do, I want it, this is my email, whatever. So I used it as an opportunity to build and grow my database and my sphere of influence. Now, had I just posted on Facebook saying, hey, I'm doing a webinar. This is the date and time. This is the link to register. Do you think I'd get 180 people? No, I'd probably get like five or 10 or something. But because I got really interactive with it and I would comment and tag them back and then thank them and private message them, it's all part of the algorithm. So now when I do another event like this, I'm gonna be higher on their awareness radar. It's awesome. So the four main ways that you can increase your engagement would be direct messages. That's probably the biggest one. If you can get a real conversation with a real person and it goes back and forth multiple times, that's huge. So now when you post in the future, there's a good chance that they will see your post. Comments, likes, uh, story replies. Those are all easy little touches that don't cost you anything. It's just like, here's the thing. It's called social media for a reason you gotta be social with it. If you're not gonna be social with it and you don't wanna do it, that's fine. Just don't waste your time not doing it. I'd rather you not even try and instead of you saying, yeah, I got Instagram, it doesn't work for me. It's cause you're not working it. You have to actually like be interactive with people and not be shy. Now of all the questions I was asked, this is the biggest burning one that people have. And that is how do you get that swipe up feature in your story when a person can swipe up and it will link them to your website? 
Instagram has a rule that you need uh, 10,000 followers before that will unlock. And even some people that have 10,000 followers, that's not even unlocked for them yet. I'm gonna share with you the answer, but I'm not gonna give it to you. What I want you to do is I want you to go to Chelsea's Instagram account. I'm gonna to point to her name. Um, underneath her name, if you scroll down when you're on her profile, is a IGTV button, Instagram television. Click on that tab and then scroll down even further and you're gonna see this little video called Insta story swipe up hack free under 10,000 followers. So that video is gonna break down how you can get that for free when you're under 10,000 followers. So when you're there, tell her I sent you or tag me. I just wanna know, did anybody actually go and watch the video? Cause this is probably one of the biggest questions people have and I wanna share it with you, but I don't wanna give it to you. This is more like an Easter egg hunt. So hopefully you appreciate it if you want the answer. Now, remember in the link description, in the bio, you only have room for one link. Well, we use tools, I use Shorby. This allows you to consolidate your call to actions, essentially, because if you send people to your website, it's like a choose your own adventure, who knows where they go. But with this, I can be way more tighter with my call to actions and the products and services that I'm offering. So these tools are really cool. I really encourage you to take a look at it, only if you have a lot of engagement, traffic and followers. If you don't, then save your money. You probably don't need these tools whatsoever. However, if you do like free advice and you want to hang out a little more, this is my Instagram account. This is Chelsea's Instagram account. You can take a picture of the screen by scanning the code or just look us up by typing our usernames down below. That's it. That was video number three. This is the third vlog I've done. Number four is coming up. I do a bi-weekly vlog and I encourage you to comment below. This is the only thing I care about. You can like and you can share and do all that other stuff. Awesome. But if you comment, that nothing makes me glow better than that. So... Thanks a lot. Okay, I'm gonna stop that, come back and come to you. Hey, okay, so social media is such a powerful tool. I find a lot of real estate agents really, some real estate agents really don't leverage it the, the way that they should. It's kind of like they'll add me as a friend and then say, hey, like my business page. And it's like, oh my, no, no. So. Social media, it's funny because it's in the title. It's called social. You're supposed to be social with it. It's not a sales channel for you. It's not like a, I mean, it is an advertising platform for sure. But go with the 80-20 rule where 80% of what you do on social media is positive, colorful, share worthy, you, personal, relatable, you know, all of those things. And then the other 20% business. So of every, every 10 posts, eight of them are not business advertising, hey, take action, call to action type of thing. It's, that's the way I look at it. I mean, I know some real estate agents that their Instagram is 100% only real estate. And if it works for them, awesome. That I mean, it, everybody can do it their own way. Now, generally speaking, as a general rule of thumb, most real estate agents listening to this would be better off on the 80-20 rule they'll get more engagement they'll get more conversations it's it's just like here, here's a trick that i do um i did a facebook post two weeks ago or something like that where i said um it was about an upcoming webinar that i wanted people to register for now if i was to take the link to my landing page and post it on the on the post itself and say hey my next webinar is next week here's the date and time register here how many people would have clicked that and registered? Not that many compared to how many people commented because I didn't even put the link. I just said, hey, I got an upcoming webinar. Who wants to be invited or who wants to be included? And then all these people were commenting. I do, I'm interested, I'd like a copy, that sort of thing. So all of these people commented. Now, what I did was I let a day go by before I responded to anybody. And then because have you ever posted something on social media and you get a bunch of comments and likes or whatever the first day, maybe the second day, but by day three, it's kind of like fizzled out and you kind of have to post a new posting. So what I do is I'll post something, I'll let it fizzle out and then I comment and respond to everybody. So I went down and I'm like, okay, Joey, I'm getting you the link, check your inbox. Okay, Marianne, excited to have you on board. And I like tag their name as a response to everybody who said that they wanted to be included. And because I did that, it re-sparked all of the, um, 
the algorithm so that anybody who is connected between me and Joey or me and Marianne or whatever, it now is on their newsfeed. So then I got to double dip and I got a whole bunch more people that were commenting. So then after I did the webinar, I made a quick little video of me just talking about, hey, we did an awesome webinar today. These are the things we covered. If anybody wants a copy of the recording, just message below. And I don't know what, I, there's like 500 comments on that. If I had just posted, hey, who wants a copy of the recording, click to this landing page and register with your name, your phone number, and your email, how many people would have done it? Not 500, right? And so it's all about just being social. So social media works on Facebook, Instagram, doesn't matter, um, LinkedIn. It's all about you just like interacting with people as a real human being and not coming from what's in it for you first, because then you're always going to come last. It, it, social media doesn't really like the self promoters. Uh, social media likes the givers, right? And so um, I really have a, a, a simple rule set of I will private message people I will send voice messages to people. I will like their photos. If they do an Instagram story, I will interact with it. Um, but not to game the system of like, I'm some sort of weird loser that just sits behind a desk talking to people that I don't even know. I do it with true intention with people that I actually like and care about. And so it's just a way to interact. But Facebook and Instagram, they're tracking everything. So when you're scrolling through your news feed and you slow down, to look at that one person's photo, they're tracking like how much time and then you keep going. If you happen to click on a person's name and go to their profile and you scroll through and you're looking at a bunch of their photos and you go pretty deep, Facebook is like, oh wow, he's got interest in her. Like they know the weirdo stuff that you're up to. And so <clears throat> because of this, I, I they're tracking like, are you commenting back and forth to one another? Are you liking her photos? Is she liking your photos? That sort of thing. And so because I just am intentionally interactive with people um, and always like positive, colorful, sharing, giving, um, over the course of time, it has just created a tidal wave of free exposure for me. So now when I post and interact on social media, I get a lot higher engagement than I would have X number of years ago. It's just like a snowballing effect. So the more you do it, the bigger and better it becomes. I'm going to, oh, sorry. No, I was just, I was agreeing with you. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, so we got five minutes. I'm going to leave off with uh, a couple of tips on just like real estate agents and getting business with their database, their network, that sort of thing, because all this video stuff and social media, um, it's great. However, a lot of real estate agents, you've got fruit that is lower hanging. It's like right there. You just got to like pick it off. And um, so the first one would be your database. Big shocker there. Now, a lot of real estate agents, they feel like a pest or a nuisance calling their database. They're like, oh, man, I haven't talked to these people in three years. I almost want to start over with a whole new database because these people have never heard from me. And um, so how I battled that was um, I would pick up the phone call everybody in my database and I like Laura answers the phone and be like, Hey Laura, it's Danny Wood over at ABC Realty. Hopefully I caught you at an okay moment. I don't want to interrupt you. It's just about your little area in your neighborhood. Is it okay if we chat? She says, Oh yeah, what's up? Hey. And I'm like, okay, cool. So we have this new program that it alerts you of all the activity in your area. Now I'm not anticipating you're thinking of buying a home or selling a home so you can totally relax, but just play along with me. If you were to guess, how many homes do you think sold in your neighborhood last year? And you can be wrong. Just take a wild guess. It doesn't, whatever she says, it doesn't matter. She'd be like, oh, I don't know, 8, 12, 20. Whatever she says, I'd repeat the number and say, 20. Okay, say you're right. You would agree that's not a very overwhelming number and it's not very spammy. Because what our system is going to do is email you of all the activities showing you the pictures, the price. You're going to see the home renovations people are doing, the home staging that people have done. Um, it's going to really put your finger on the pulse of the market that matters most to you. Now, I don't want you to miss out on that. So what's the best email I include you on? And then she's going to give me her email. And then like, so it's a way for me to build and grow my database and actually get more information out of people. And I'm like, okay, now I'm going to really laser this down for you just so that it's your neighborhood. So what's the exact address, like postal code and everything. I want to make it really relatable. And she's going to tell me her address and her postal code. Then what I do is I set her up as a prospect match on my MLS as if she was a home buyer. Only her criteria isn't the whole city. Her criteria is just that one little pocket. 
And I do that for her and him and her and them. And I do it for all the people in my database, as many as I can. If Imagine you had 100 people all set up on that or 200 people or 300 people. Like everybody you know should be set up on that. It's real estate related content. It's local and relevant to them. You don't even have to create the content. It's self-generating. It's branded as you. It doesn't cost them anything. It doesn't cost you anything. There's like so many checks across the board. This is the first thing every brand new real estate agent should do. If you're switching from one company to another company and you're starting a new, this is the very first thing I would have my agents do is to get everybody on their database set up on this nosy neighbor alert. It's free. It's awesome. You should be doing it. I used to also just use uh, Craigslist and Kijiji to contact the for sale by owners, but I never called them to have the for sale by owner conversation because it was all about like objection handling and they're kind of grumpy people and they don't really like realtors and they don't want to pay a commission, that sort of thing. So I would call the for sale by owner and say, hey, Joey Fisbo, I noticed you have a home for sale. Is it still available? And he says, yeah because he's a Fizbo, <laughs> just kidding. And so I'd be like, okay, Joey, uh, my name's Danny Wood. I'm a local real estate agent, but unlike all the other real estate agents who are calling you and probably hounding you to get your listing, I'm actually calling about the buyer side. See, as a buyer agent, you don't pay my fees and it's a totally free service. So what I wanna do is help you find the needle in the haystack. So let me ask, if you were to sell your home and move, where would you move to, Oshawa or Whippy? And I put the words in their mouth of whatever cities you serve. And then that creates a conversation. And now what I'm doing is I'm working them on the buyer side. I'm getting them to set up on a buyer prospect match. Because if a for sale by owner sells the roof over their head, I'm going to assume they want to stay dry in the winter, right? So they still need to buy another home. And when you work as a buyer agent, they don't pay the commission. So there's no like commission talk on that end of it either. It's just every day I would have six eight, depending on the city that you work in. It's just like a fresh list of free business sitting on the table every single day. So I have a whole series of free ideas that agents can leverage from home. If anybody wants to do like a one-on-one -on -one conversation, my cell number is 905-903-5442. And if any of you want to leverage your, not your time, but you want to leverage your money, you just want to do paid ads. We have done for you marketing as well. So if you want to do any Facebook ads or Google pay per click or that sort of thing, we can set it and forget it for you. So you don't have to be hands on and we can manage that. So Phil, I want to say thanks so much for having me. I have another podcast to, to do right after this call. So I'm going to uh, switch over to that line. If you or any of your agents ever want to reach out to me, this goes out to you as well, Phil. Uh, give me a text at that same number and we'll do a half hour call. Just you and I, okay? Perfect. I really appreciate it, Dan. Thank you very much. And thanks everyone. We'll see you at the next video.